God is worthy of our praise. And when we exalt his name, we bring glory to our Heavenly Father. Today, I'm better together. Callie Halligenthal, Nicole C., Beth Redman, and Nicole Binion are joining us to talk about how to keep our hearts pure and worship him completely. And all of our focus is on God. Come on, let's talk about it. When I was a little girl, you know how you just kind of went out of order and you got to doing really dumb stuff and you yeah. started kind of bossing your parents around? Well, that lasted about a second for me <laughs> when I was little. And my dad was always there to remind me who was boss. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I had one of those. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That I'm in control. Right. That I am all authority mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm on earth, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> under God. Yeah. Um, and my world came together because daddy was in control. Yeah. Wow. Daddy yeah. was the authority. And we were all created by God, under God. Mm -hmm. yeah. God created us. We have a creator. And, and when he fixes our minds and our hearts, we can rest so much in that. I don't know if you've yeah. ever felt that. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Yeah. Thanks. Dad. It's thanks dad. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for setting my world straight today. And yeah. I think so many times the in, going into the world of worship and exalting God for who he is. And when our world can just seem like chaos, I know every generation has had their moment. This has kind of been our moment yeah. in our time yeah. in, in my life. Mm -hmm of everyone, you know, if you're God-less, then you have to become God, mm -hmm. right? right? So yeah. how many voices That's out there? That's a scary there? place yeah. to be. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So people that are godless, that don't care about God being holy, and we, you know, give all of our glory to God, the one and only, mm -hmm. um, have to pretend that they are God. So we've got a lot of that going yeah, on right yeah. now. Everyone then, Which is why we have so much chaos, right? So much yeah. chaos. Yeah. And I think acknowledging our Savior, the King of the universe, yeah. <laughs> the ruler of all, Yahweh, yeah. you know, brings the chaos in our, our lives mm -hmm. down to the point yeah. where my world is fixed mm -hmm. because my eyes are on you. You're in control. Mm -hmm. You are all authority. You are all power. Yeah. You are all justice. Mm -hmm. You are all righteousness. Mm -hmm. You are, and it calms my world. And sometimes, sometimes when you're, I'm worried about things and I'm trying to, and uh, you kind of forget that I don't have to do that. Yeah. Right. I can cast all my cares on yeah. the Lord, yes. you know, and, and, Worship for me so much is that, yeah. is going, going, God, okay, I fix my eyes yeah. on my creator, yeah. on the ruler of all things to fix me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I come out of so many of those worship things by myself mm -hmm. with my world so fixed yes. yeah. that I don't have to worry right. anymore. right. Worship, it, it realigns our heart, right? It, does. it aligns us. And it's like we come under submission again. We have a sinner again. Yeah. You are in control. You are holy. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. And, um, and a lot of times, you know, I was just listening to a podcast by Beth's husband, <laughs> Matt Redman. Oh, who would that be? <laughs> Matt, Matt Redman. Me? Matt Redman. Yes. Redman and Riddle and Jeremy Riddle. And they were talking about, uh, you know, the holiness of God. Um, the, the, a lot of times the, the songs we love to sing and that connect with us are songs um, of, that, that connect to our needs because we're humans and we have these felt needs. Yeah. But the songs that, that are worship. That, that that are just about like the holiness of God, that, that t totally focus on who he is. We can't even really comprehend his holiness, his yeah. purity. Why, why sin can't stand in his presence is because he is 100% pure, 100% holy. And um, 
But, but when we come to him and say, and say that you are holy, all glory, all honor, all power belongs to you. And I'm going to get my heart in alignment with you. And I'm going to submit to you. I'm going to surrender all this stuff I've been trying to do and making, I'm making a mess of things because I'm just not bringing it to you and saying, you, you have control of my life. And what's so, what's so awesome about those times is that you forget why you came in the first place. Yeah. 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 That, that, oh, I thought I needed something. <laughs> I just right. needed yeah. this. Yeah. 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 And all that, all those cares of the world go yeah. away. Yeah. It reminds me a little bit uh, about the story. So Jesus is walking with the disciples and they, and they pass by Caesarea Philippi, which was like a center for pagan worship at the time. And because of like the proximity, the geography of where they're walking, we know that they were close enough where they could have heard the worship, the pagan worship happening on the countryside. Mm-hmm. And this is the point when Jesus turns and, and he says, who do they say that I am? Like, and that's where it's like, well, it's Elijah. And it's, and then he turns to Peter and says, but who do you say that I am? Right. And then we have this moment of magnifying the Lord. We have this moment of testifying. Well, everyone else, all of this worship from our surrounding context, the world that we live in is making this noise about, about where, about who reigns, about, about whose authority is running this thing. And we, and we (laughs) see this worship, right. And I, and I feel like I'm, I'm aware of those voices, the, the battle in my mind of the worship of who, who is high above, who, yeah. who reigns, right? And then you have Jesus cut right through the yeah. noise and directly ask Peter, but who do you say that I am? Mm. And the, the wild thing, right? And he, he has revelation following him. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then what do we see happen? We have Jesus turn after, after Peter identified who he was, Jesus identifies him back, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? I think I think we're That's always good. given the opportunity to tell him who he is. Yes, and desperately need in our humility yeah. as children, we need to be identified. We yes. need to know yes. who yes. we are. And you see, you see a whole world. I mean, we are we are born with the design to be told by our Father, our yes. loving yes. Father, who we yes. are. Yes. Right? We're worthy because He is. We yes. are clean because of the blood of Jesus. We are redeemed. We are set free. We're made whole. We we live by the words from. From his mouth, but this exchange that happens in our exalting, in our worship, that he would turn, cut through the noise and identify yeah. to us, this is who you are. So when we tell him who he is correctly, yes. yeah. then he's able to tell us who we are yes. as well. You're right. Yes. That's the order. That's yeah, I love good. what you say about the father being, you know, being the boss made you feel secure. Mm-hmm. And it's like when we orientate ourselves around the throne, he's always being a king on the throne. Yes. And when we try and make ourselves kings of our own lives or we worship idols, nothing Nothing will satisfy, will only oppress yeah, right. when you orient out yourself around that throne and make him the king of kings where he already is. And my husband just wrote this song with Brandon Lake. Um, and the chorus is, I won't sing because you've blessed me. I'll sing because you're holy. Ooh. And we could just sing that. It's not about me. Right. You know, praise relates to his goodness. Yeah. yeah and thanksgiving, his greatness, worship, his holiness. I'm not factoring in there. I shouldn't be there. There's one king on the throne. And when we orientate ourselves in the right posture, in the right place, the world is as it should truly be, right? He's our king and we're just his servants. And there's such peace and security in that place. But when we make it about ourselves, you know, when we come away and think, I just sang a worship song and it had the word me in it 17 times. (laughs) Sing about that. Sing about that. We've slipped away from the king on the throne. Right. That's good. Well, That's and good. I love that that even dwell, you know, when we dwell in his presence, when we start lifting him up, we make space yeah. for him to dwell. I in- yeah. inhabit the praises yes. of my people. Yeah. So we create that and then we're entering. So we're not trying to bring God, you know, welcome into my world. Right. We're going into his Absolutely. world. Yeah. We're going into yeah. his courts. Yeah. We're going yeah. into his presence. Presence. We're yeah. going into His throne, right. where and then when you look at that throne, you become, yes. yeah, more like Him. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I you know, yeah. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's where I want to be. Yeah. That's where I want to live. That's the safe place. Yes. yes. And, and Jesus said that His Father is looking for those who worship in spirit. Mm-hmm. And in truth, the truth of who God is and the truth of who we are. You know what I'm saying? In the right spirit and, you know, the Holy Spirit, but also the right breath, the right lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? He's looking for those. And so I'm glad we can be found and other people can be found as those worshiping.
strong in spirit and in truth. Yeah. One of the things I love is we are elevated, right? Because we we come out of worshiping him rightly and we see um we we see things a little bit from his perspective, yes. right? Those uh a friend of ours used to say, used to talk about being up in an airplane and he, you know, flying and his little girl, she said her L's with like a W. Yes. So so he would say, they they'd be up in the air and she'd say, Whittle bitty houses, whittle bitty cars. Yes. We said, but that's how when we worship the Lord, yes. we we elevate, elevate our perspective above. is elevated and we see how big he is and how small That's all those good. little, all those things are. Widow bitty houses, yeah, yeah. you know? Um, and I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, and you know, even back to what you were saying earlier about your father just checking you basically, bringing you back into line. Checking you. Yeah, yeah you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's good because we all want to be right with the father. Yes. And sometimes a father has to take us through things to say, uh-uh, I got to get that out. You know, that's well, what Well, and worship is a fire. It is. Yeah. Me let me, yeah. Let me get that dross. Let's clear it away. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So have you ever had to worship through a bad attitude? Ooh, glory. Okay. Tell me, <laughs> tell me one of those moments. Do you have a moment of, um, I do not feel like doing this tonight. I've had a couple actually. You have? Um, well, one was at home and this is, I mean, I'm not going to be Debbie Downer, but Go ahead. I had just, uh, this was many years ago, and I just learned something um, about my vows that had been transgressed. And my heart was broken. I was crushed. And I remember going into my closet, and I got on my knees, and I just bawled and bawled and bawled. And I remember uttering, saying, God, though you slay me, yeah, well, I trust you. Like this, this carpet is my altar right here. And I choose to worship you, not just in song at this moment, but with my life. And then I remember weeks later, I was on the Women of Faith tour and uh, I had another moment and I was just, you know, it was my turn to go up in the next, you know, five minutes to take the stage. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I had just learned something else in my heart and everything. I was like, God, I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like being here. Like yeah. the last thing I want to do is take a stage and my, my marriage is falling apart. Like I'm like, yeah. this is a real for me, you yeah. know? Yeah. And um, I'm about to go up there and sing, I know my Redeemer lives and right now everything, you know, back right. here. Yeah. And I remember Miss Patsy, she was on uh, tour, Miss Patsy Claremont, mm -hmm. a little fireball. Mm -hmm. And she kind of knew some of the things that were going on in my life and she, leaned over and she whispered in my ear, well, she didn't really whisper, but she said, honey, <laughs> I need you to get it together. God has you on assignment to lead these people into his presence and you get up there and do what he's called you to do, then you can come back here and fall apart if you need to, <laughs> but you get up there and do it. And I said, yes, ma'am, yeah. here we go. Wow. And we got up there and it was one of those things of God, yes, things may not be how I want it to, but this stage will be my offering, yes. will be my altar right now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And in that moment, I chose to worship him, not because everything felt good, because everything was going well, but because he was still going well. He was still mm -hmm. God, even in the midst of it all. And so that praise became my weapon. It became my battle cry against the enemy. Like you say, I can't, you say, I'm not, you say everything is broken, but guess what? This is what I know. Yeah. So I'm going to declare to you the word of God. I'm going to declare to yes. you and everything around the truth of who God is, yeah. even though I may not feel like it. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to trust God to take mm -hmm. care of the rest. And mm -hmm. so for me, I've had to do it many times when didn't feel like it, but every single time I did it, my feelings came into alignment. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. so they they wind up lining up with the truth yes. of the word. Yes. So I have such a petty, <laughs> embarrassing right. example, but that was but, yeah, like okay, yeah, here we go. Like, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Here we go. Um, <laughs> bring us back up. Yeah, that was there, you know, that bring was, us up. <laughs> that was stunning. I'm like that. That makes so much yeah. sense. That yeah. that is a weighty yeah. sacrifice yeah. that that you were going through, and to bring that to him and to and to lead to worship through it. Mine is less. Um, I remember yeah. I was. I think I was about to lead worship, and um, and you know I think it happens if you lead worship, but then if you're in the congregation, this is so petty. But like. If somebody starts a song and you're like, I've heard this yeah. four million times. Again? <laughs> Again, you know? And somebody, I think I was leading worship, I was co-leading, and they were like, how about you do this song? And I was like, I don't, I like don't, this song. Yeah, I don't want to do it. Dumb I don't lyrics, want to do it. Melody, I'm, not like it. it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. feeling yeah. it. Yeah. I'm not yeah. feeling yeah. it. I'm not feeling it. Which, yeah. whether you're a worship leader or whatever, yeah. I'm not feeling it is a thing, yeah. right? Yeah. If we're yeah. honest. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe it's just me, but you're that talking would be a to thing everybody. For me. So <laughs> okay, so I wasn't feeling it, and yeah. I'm like, no, but but no one's gonna feel like it's anointed because I'm not feeling whatever. And the Lord stopped me, and it was one of those moments of and the Lord, yeah. and and he goes, Callie, so this song that you don't want to do, and you're having a bit of an attitude about, and I was like, yeah. And he goes, uh, is it true about me? Hey. Hey. <gasps> Enough said that. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. It is. It is true about you. And he goes, then you can find yourself in it. Then you can, then you tell yourself to be moved by truth. Yeah. Then you direct yourself to find, find the testimony of what that song, you might not like how it sounds. It might be old to you, but is the truth old to you? And if it is, we have a problem, oh, right? Like yeah. we have a big problem. Yes. I need to be present to the faithfulness yes. of God, even if I don't like how it's packaged, yes. even yes. if it's yes. already been done before and I'm not going to feel like the cool, fresh, whatever. Yeah. Well, I don't get to be that way about the nature and character of God. Yeah. I get to be yeah. refreshed in in, and I and for me it was an invitation to remember all over again yeah. to be a student of that particular facet of who he was until it was fresh. Yeah. And I remember yeah. too he told me so that was the first like oh ouch okay great <laughs> thank you right yes that was a spank and we call yeah. it a whooping yeah. but it's okay, okay. <laughs> wow um, and the second part and he, is he goes is it is it impacting my church wow. is that song moving my church and I was like yeah, again yes sir. And, and him being like, well, then, then it's working. It's moving my people. Wow. Can, can that's you be moved for it? Yeah, it's, so it's setting good. out and it's accomplishing something that's bringing my, my yeah. kids to me. Yeah. Can, you, can you please find yourself in it for that reason, Ooh. you know? And for me, it was like, oh, man. And I immediately, it wasn't harsh. It wasn't cruel at all. It was like the option of, hey, could you think about it this way? And the submitting myself to yeah, I am not feeling this. I have a bad attitude about this, but it is true. And there's an invitation in this to find all over again how you are, who you say you are, who these songs are expressing that you are. So I get to choose the invitation all over again to submit to truth yeah. and to be impassioned about it. Whether or not I felt it coming in, yeah. you know, wow. that was a, that was good. a good, very real good. human moment and, and for the applies, Lord. I mean, not just to worship leaders, those of us leading songs on a platform, yes. but it, in the congregation, yes. it's us every Sunday. Are we doing this one again? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Man, yeah. I, I was reading recently this book by Eugene Peterson, uh, Hallelujah Banquet. I think it's, yeah. Um, but he was talking about in one of the chapters about, you know, when you talked about the truth, is this truth about me still the same? You know, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Every day he makes a sunrise and he makes a sunset. It's day, it's the same thing over and over again, yet he's not stuck and he's not static. It's a lot, he's, you know, he brings life and is, is alive. And it's like, oh man, so I can sing this yeah. truth over and over again because it's still true and it's still, uh, you know, keeping it alive yes. in, inside of me. Wow, that's good. <laughs> Those so little good. spankings are along the way. <laughs> I align my heart, Lord. I'm sorry. I felt that way about dancing recently. Mm. Where actually, I can't wait for the feeling. Mm. That actually, that is a beautiful expression of worship. Mm. You know, we get to stand up, face down, whatever, but actually bringing our bodies as a living sacrifice. Yeah. And you think about them carrying the ark and, you know, dancing yeah. and like this yeah. celebration and crossing over the Red Sea, dancing, mm. celebration. Mm. Actually, there's a place for that in worship. But yes. so often I'm just on the outside looking in, just thinking, well, I don't feel like doing that. And I yeah. felt the Lord recently just be like, will you bring me your whole self? Mm. Will you? And so I'm just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> My husband's, like, my husband's like, I don't know what this is. I'm like, it's a sacrifice of praise. This is what's happening. Yeah. But actually, it's like, he yeah. demands all of me. Right. My yeah. life, my everything, yeah. like everything that has really breath, praise the Lord, just give it all in my English, yeah. you know, special way. Is just come and <laughs> bring. So maybe we, yeah. should, maybe we should bring it back, Nicole. It's <laughs> good. Bring the moves back. I remember back, like, again, years ago, we were at this church in Las Vegas, incredible experiences in the presence of the Lord, but I was in the congregation and, and being set free to like dance for the Lord ever. Cause I always felt like I'm going to look so stupid. I, it just wasn't in me. It wasn't whatever my pride. Usually it's what it comes, it's what it comes down to, right? Is our own pride. And I just remember being released to just jump and dance in the presence of the Lord. And I mean, the freedom that that brought to my heart, it was just like, a 
a new level of, of, of experiencing God, <laughs> but in a way that I had been uncomfortable before, but it was like, it, it is freeing and it is, um, it is a beautiful thing to bring to him. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So I had a little bit of an experience the other day that I think maybe some people struggle with a little bit because I found myself in this little struggle in my heart and in my mind that isn't like me. And I know that I did, went through it for a purpose. So, yeah. so it was kind of one of those. And I was in a, in a place where we were around a bunch of people, but we had some time. But I hadn't just gotten on my knees for the last couple of days and just really focused and prayed. And things, we'd had a beautiful, productive week. Things were good. And I started feeling co condemnation, which is not from the Lord. Mm -hmm. It wasn't conviction. Yeah. It was condemnation that you haven't even prayed much this week. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, well, I, I've praised a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we've been productive. And so this is all going in my head. And, and but it was like, no, you need to, you need to pray, you know, and, and, and make sure that what you've been doing is been God's will. And just this weird, and I'm thinking, where is this coming from? And so I started trying to pray. You guys, I couldn't put three words together that made any sense. It was an absolute train wreck. And I'm sitting there thinking, what in the, what in the world? And so I thought, okay, what? Mm -hmm. what's happening right now because yeah. I need to have a moment. And this old worship song, and I can't even remember what it is, from my childhood, mm -hmm. I start singing this song of worship mm -hmm. and tears just begin to flow. Mm -hmm. And I hear God speak to me and say, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. yeah. What are you doing? Well, God, I'm trying to pray. What are you doing? It was like, this is all, I, and I'm bawling because I'm singing this song, and it's, so I'm having this conversation. But yeah. I, I, and he's like, this is all I want. Yeah. This yeah. is all I need. Yeah. I don't need you yeah. to pray. I need you to live. Yeah, yeah. dwell, be, yes. Dwell yes. in your praise yeah. and your worship to me. I will make you productive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. I will yeah. put you on the right path. Yeah. And that's what I had experienced mm -hmm. all week long. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Doing, fulfilling your yep. purpose mm -hmm. and your destiny yeah. yes. because this is all good. Yes. But yet I think so many people feel so um, pushed off from yeah. God because they don't, think they've done enough. They didn't check the boxes. Yeah. yeah. They haven't prayed enough. Yeah. They haven't, you know, I don't really deserve this because I haven't done this. Yeah. And that's not at all yeah. who God is. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I found that oftentimes when God will do like these big blessings in my life, sometimes it has nothing to do with, have I prayed every yeah. single day of the <laughs> week? I did, my Bible study wasn't yeah. consistent this week. Like, it's like, it's, it's His grace. I think He reminds us too that it's not by our own works. It's yeah. not, it's like having a relationship with your husband or your best friend. You're not like, well, we got it now. Let's sit down for 15 minutes and talk. Yeah. It's not how it works. You just do life. Yeah. It just is. It's not a, a, but I think the devil would want to try and push us where God is trying to pull and invite, wow. yeah. you know? Yeah. And yeah. there's it's a difference. It's always an invitation, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's even, I, I found myself, you know, if I'm, if I'm coming into lead worship and I just have so much that's kind of collected, um, I'll just end up going before the Lord and I just ask for a fresh covering of his blood all over again, you know, rather than all the noise and everything, just, hey, all over again, would you just cover me with what, what you did, what you accomplished? It's yeah. not about all the rest. Let's just bring it all back down to the simplicity of this and, and then to worship from that yeah. with everything set straight. Yeah. Father, we love you. We just thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your holiness. Thank you for loving us, God, that when we put our eyes on you, yes. Father, then in turn, we can see ourselves through your eyes as loved, of God, the so loved of God. And Father, we're so grateful for that today. Father, I pray that every person watching, 
Every person listening, God has an experience with you that changes their life because one moment in your presence, one moment in the manifest presence of God, one moment, one touch from you can change our everything. God let us experience you in every situation, in every circumstance. Father, let us keep our eyes on you in your precious, beautiful and holy name. We love you, Lord, amen. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.